A live look right now, the University of Cincinnati, where participants at tonight's Relay for Life event set aside time to honor a champion. Thousands of volunteers gathering to raise money for cancer research, a cause near and dear to Lauren Hill. Her goal was to spend Christmas with her family and to make life better for kids like her. She did both. Lauren Hill passed away today after her fight with DIPG, a rare form of brain cancer primarily found in children. But to say she lost her battle to cancer wouldn't be right because Lauren beat the odds. She accomplished more in her 19 years than most of us could ever hope to. And we begin our tribute in Lawrenceburg tonight where Lauren took the court as a tiger wearing her trademark number 22. Our Jessica Brown joins us live outside the high school there where the outpouring of love and support continues to grow tonight. Jessica. Yeah, good evening, Amy. Definitely an emotional night here in Lawrenceburg. The makeshift memorial that's here at the high school has grown since this afternoon. Even at this hour, we're seeing folks come by, pay their respects, leave flowers, candles, notes, and posters in honor of Lauren Hill. Some of them who knew her personally, some of them who didn't. All of them, though, touched by her life. At Lawrenceburg High School, you can still see glimpses of Lauren, her words written on the steps of her high school and even students there wearing her number, 22. Lauren has touched uh, many people within the school community. Uh, her never give up attitude will, will be remembered. A memorial continues to grow. You can see flowers, signs, and even a place where people can send a message of love to Lauren. The entire Lawrenceburg community really supports her efforts and her fight that she had. A fight for a cure of DIPG, a rare form of brain cancer she was diagnosed with. Students at University of Cincinnati are continuing Lauren's fight tonight at Relay for Life. Organizers at the cancer fundraising event also took a moment to remember Lauren. She is a, a champion of the cause in our community. Uh, she was really emerged as a leader uh, to, to help those in the Cincinnati community rally around uh, every one of us who's touched by this horrible disease. And even in a stadium that typically has thousands of screaming fans, for Lauren, tonight it was quiet. Yeah, Lauren Hill is a big advocate for the Cure Starts Now Foundation, raising about $2.5 million, which is really amazing for DIPG research. Now, it's that never give up spirit that we won't forget. Live in Lawrenceburg, I'm Jessica Brown, Fox 19 Now. Jessica, thank you. Lauren's family, friends, and teammates invite you to a public memorial service. It'll be held 7 o'clock Monday night at the Sinta Center. That's where she scored her first collegiate basket in November. A private funeral service will be held Wednesday at 1 o'clock at Mount St. Joseph University. And on campus today, the Mount St. Joe women's basketball team leading the procession in honor of their teammate. Fellow students and those in the community gathering under a bright, sunny sky after days of rain. Perfect for celebrating Lauren's life. I saw her once on campus, I think. And I saw her at the game. And I, you know, I've never been so proud of somebody in my entire life. Just kind of just stepped up and decided to be a hero instead of giving up, and the, that's very brave of her, and that's what she's going to remember it as. The pain will end. A smile does not. I know Lauren is smiling, so I'm going to smile, and I would like everyone else to keep smiling for Lauren. Keep smiling for Lauren. Lauren's coach, Dan Benjamin, and her teammates say she will forever remain part of the basketball program at Mount St. Joe. Lauren's impact extends far beyond the Tri-State. People around the world inspired by her courage and her mission as tweets and Facebook comments continue to pour in from everywhere. Cincinnati native Nick Lachey sharing his condolences, as well as Xavier head coach Chris Mack, UC President Santa Ono, and Bengals offensive lineman Andrew Whitworth. We invite you to offer your thoughts and condolences to the family of Lauren Hill. How has she inspired you? Go to fox19now.com, tell us your story. What an absolutely beautiful day today.
A look outside tonight. We're going to send it over to meteorologist Jeff Creighton for more on what you can expect for your Friday night. Hey, Jeff. Good evening, Amy. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, mainly clear skies overnight with light winds. We could see a little bit of fog early tomorrow, but it's setting us up for a very nice weekend. We get an opportunity to dry out after seeing a couple of days worth of rain. And I'll tell you what, portions of northern Kentucky seeing upwards of two locally three inches of rain in the last couple of days. Here's the satellite and radar summary. Cincinnati right in the center of your screen and high pressure continuing to build in. Weak disturbance working to the north of here, trailing a little bit of rainfall down towards the I-70 corridor. But for us, those mainly clear skies will translate into a beautiful day uh, tomorrow and as we go into your Sunday as well. That means Doppler radar right now for us is a clean sweep. 56 right now, cold rain, 55 in Batavia, 53 this hour in Georgetown. When you wake up tomorrow morning, it'll be a little on the chilly side, right around 40 degrees. But by tomorrow afternoon, we'll take temperatures into the low 60s. And if you like tomorrow, I think you're really going to like... Uh, your Sunday as well. But we do have rain in the forecast. We'll detail that all in your seven day forecast ahead. Amy. Jeff, thanks. We'll check back tonight. Family and friends taking a time to remember a retired Forest Park police officer who lost his life. Visitation for 63 year old George Brooks happening now until 8 o'clock at the Thompson Hall Jordan Funeral Home on Winton Road. Brooks was hit and killed while leading a funeral procession last month in the West End. The funeral will take place tomorrow. We heard this first last night. Tonight, the plot thickens as the sister of an Anderson Township teen charged for hatching an elaborate burglary scheme appears before a judge as well. Alexis Murad in court this morning charged with obstruction and tampering with evidence. Court papers say she was caught destroying evidence. There are weapons involved in the, in the whole incident. Um, there's an investigation that's pending. Um, the facts alleged are this, these charges arise out of recorded phone conversations from the Hamilton County Justice Center between her and her brother, David Morad, um, who was in front of you for the past two days. Yeah, as I just mentioned there, her brother was in court just yesterday. Police say he and at least one other person had meetings planning out the details of the burglary scheme, including scouting the location with trial runs and making escape plans. Still no comment tonight on allegations that at least five Highlands High School baseball players are suspended from school for reportedly dumping urine on another player. We broke the story last night at 10 after our Trisha Mackey interviewed a parent of one of those players involved. That parent telling us the coach didn't see the incident, but the boys reportedly took video and pictures on cell phones. All charges have been dropped against four McNicholas High School students accused of assaulting a teammate last year. In October, police say a group of football players kicked another student in the groin with cleated shoes, with another teammate shoving his rear end in that victim's face. The accused teens went through an anti-bullying program to get assault charges dropped. And two kayakers rescued from a Butler County River now facing charges tonight. This happened in Seven Mile Creek in St. Clair Township this afternoon. 27-year-old Jeffrey Markham and 22-year-old Christopher Markham in separate kayaks at the time, both losing control due to high water and strong currents there. The two were rescued on an island by an air care helicopter. Both subject subjects charged with reckless or unsafe operation of a vessel, a third degree misdemeanor. In a statement, Sheriff Jones said, this is absolutely ridiculous. The current in that river could have cost several lives to try to rescue two people that should have known better. I am all for rescuing those in need. That is why I have all of these resources. I do not like putting my own people or anyone else in danger when something like this could have been prevented. Happening now across the country, a small Midwestern town devastated by a tornado which claimed two lives, leveling everything in its path. In the midst of all the rubble, the residents of, Fair of Fairdale, Illinois, say they are determined to rebuild. Nick Valencia has their story. Heartbreak and heroics after a massive tornado tears down an Illinois town. We met an individual uh, just a few moments ago that was rescued from her home under rubble. Uh, but she bandaged her head and is now working in the Red Cross shelter to help the citizens here. The swath of tornadoes caught on tape. Did you hit those cars? Oh, oh, no. oh no. Sweeping over highways. Oh my God, this is violent. Pushing over trucks. Go, then one. Go, 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 go. And ripping through communities. It's pretty much just devastation to where the tornado went through. 
The outbreak of more than a dozen tornadoes trapped people in houses, trucks, and restaurants. I feel like it's a bad dream, something I'd be watching on the news somewhere else, not in my neighborhood. But after the storm, stories of survival, while crews look to help those who may have been left behind in the rubble. It's uh, obviously distressing, and our hearts go out to the families who are still here and who've left and uh, any, any of the, those who are injured. While people here vow they will rebuild stronger than ever. And we cannot let uh, a tornado knock us down. In Fairdale, Illinois, I'm Nick Valencia reporting. New video released today shows a Boston police officer being shot in the face during a traffic stop. Police officer John Moynihan recovering tonight after being shot late last month. Two unmarked police cars pulled up next to driver Angela West, who then got out of his car and shot the officer below the eye. West was later killed in a shootout with other officers. And in San Bernardino, California, an internal investigation underway tonight after video services of several officers brutally beating a suspect there. The sheriff has ordered that investigation, saying 10 officers have now been placed on paid administrative leave. The man at the center of that beating, 33-year-old Francis Pusak, arrested for stealing a horse, which you can see in this video, also wanted in connection to an identity theft investigation. He has since been hospitalized. A new dash cam video has emerged from Saturday's fatal police shooting in North Charleston, South Carolina. It shows the moments leading up to the altercation between Walter Scott and former officer Michael Slager. You can see the 50 year old Scott getting out of his car twice, fleeing the second time. Witnesses say he and the officer then engaged in a quote tussle prior to Slager firing eight shots into Scott's back. Slager has since been charged with murder. And in an interview with ABC News, his mother reacts to the shooting. I just have to let it be and uh, hope God takes care of everybody involved. Not only my family, but the Scott's family. Have seen the car. And it is still unclear tonight as to why Scott ran, but court documents do show there was a bench warrant out for his arrest since January of 2013 for failing to pay more than $18,000 in back child support. Slager was fired from the police department. Now, if convicted, he could face life in prison or the death penalty. Coming up after the break, another big name looking to throw her hat in the ring for 2016. And the latest on the investigation into a massive warehouse fire in Louisville. Those stories and more next. And high pressure continues to build into the tri-state. We saw a number of days worth of rain. We get a weekend to dry out, but unfortunately, there's more showers and thunderstorms on the horizon. Fox 19 forecast is next. Sad news out of Fort Campbell tonight. We have learned Army Specialist 22-year-old John Dawson has been killed in Afghanistan. He was killed Wednesday, attacked during an escort mission there. Dawson joined the Army in 2012 and was stationed at Fort Campbell in January of 2013. Well, it looks like Hillary Clinton will be adding her name to the growing list of 2016 presidential hopefuls, planning to announce her candidacy on Sunday. Sources close to the Clinton camp say her announcement is expected to come on social media. The former Secretary of State during Barack Obama's first administration, Republicans are already arguing her policies will closely mirror those of the current president. Clinton would become the first Democrat to formally announce a campaign. And Governor Steve Bashir will be embarking on an 11-day trip to Asia, promoting investment opportunities in the Commonwealth. The trip includes stops in Taiwan, Bashir's Japan, own. and own. Singapore. Own. And in Louisville, General Electric plans to start bringing hourly workers back to its sprawling Appliance Park Manufacturing Center next week. This coming on the heels of a massive warehouse fire there last Friday. Meanwhile, fire investigators say it could take two months to complete the investigation into what caused the largest structure fire Jefferson County has ever seen. The blaze destroying the warehouse section of Building 6, a structure that spans more than five acres. The Louisville Fire Department of Official says firefighters were still extinguishing hot spots on Wednesday. No one was hurt there. The cause unknown tonight. The HIV epidemic in Scott County, Indiana, reaching a startling 106 confirmed cases 
since December. This update coming today from the state's health department. That number expected to rise as health officials continue to test patients. In what's now being called the worst outbreak in state history, Governor Mike Pence passed a 30-day order to lift the ban on needle exchanges, which officially began April 4th. And as of this afternoon, 437 syringes had been turned in, with more than 1,100 distributed. The exchange is ex intended to stop the practice of needle sharing, believed to be the root of the HIV outbreak there. Fired Ohio State Band Director John Waters not going down without a fight. A federal judge says he will decide whether a civil lawsuit Waters filed against the school should proceed. Judge James Graham says he will issue a written decision in the coming days. Waters was fired in July after an internal investigation says he turned a blind eye to the band's sexualized culture. Waters' suit accuses the university, its president and a provost of discrimination, saying they denied him due process and treated him differently than a female employee. All right, turning to weather now, Jeff, I said just talk about the weekend and don't get past that. We don't want to hear about more rain. Yeah, let's just concentrate on the weekend. Absolutely. Yes, After a couple of days where severe weather was really the rule as opposed to the exception, we had a lot of severe weather across the area, a lot of rainfall, especially across northern Kentucky. We get an opportunity to dry out. Absolutely perfect spring weekend coming up. We'll take it. We'll concentrate on that. Outside we go. Uh, it is uh, fairly pleasant out there right now on the Ray St. Clair roof cam. We're looking at 59 degrees now since midnight. Uh, 27 one hundredths of an inch of rain. Uh, officially at the airport uh, over the last three days, 88 one hundredths. But again, uh, portions of northern Kentucky seeing two to almost three inches of rain. Now you got to wonder where all that rain's going. Well, we're watching the Ohio River. Right now it's at 45.5 feet. We know flood stage is at 52 feet. And Monday uh, afternoon we're looking at that river being upwards of 50 feet. So we've got some high water to deal with. We will not flood, at least that, that looks at this point but we will uh, see some high water across the tri-state. 51 in Oxford, 56 in Fairfield, 53 in Blanchester, 54 in Hillsborough, 53 this hour in Georgetown. I, when we wake up tomorrow morning, it'll be a little on the cool side, right around 40 degrees, but by tomorrow afternoon, we'll shoot temperatures into the low to mid 60s. A really nice looking day across the tri-state tomorrow. And if you like tomorrow, I really think you're going to like Sunday as well. Here's a Doppler radar and satellite composite. Nothing to look at around here. Uh, we've got mainly clear skies, but when we we widen the view, you'll see there is a weak disturbance working across northern Ohio right now. That's dragging a little bit of a secondary cold front through the region with a little bit of rain as far south as the I-70 quarter. I think all we see is a few high thin clouds from that. Otherwise, high pressure continues to build in, pushing all of that cloud and rainfall well off to the south and east. And again, that sets us up for a pretty nice looking weekend. Let's throw everything into motion here. This starts at midnight tonight. There's that weak disturbance working its way out of here. We'll throw it into motion. No problems overnight. No problems through your daytime on Saturday as well. Plenty of sunshine. And again, overnight Saturday into Sunday, mainly clear skies. And then I think on Sunday, we're sunny to maybe partly cloudy as we get into the afternoon, but really no problems for the weekend. Our next chance of rain doesn't show up until Monday. So when you wake up tomorrow morning, temperatures uh, in the upper 30s to right around 40. Tomorrow afternoon, plenty of sunshine. Temperatures in the low to mid 60s. Really a nice looking day across the tri-state. Your extended forecast checks in like this. We're looking at 62 for your Saturday. We're up to 70 for your Sunday. In fact, on Saturday, if you're headed to uh, the Reds game, hey, nice looking game day. Uh, we're looking at temperatures right around that first pitch at 59 degrees. We're talking about 62 as we get into that seventh inning stretch. Almost perfect, really, for sitting and watching baseball. There's those showers we bring in for Monday. For Tuesday, we're partly cloudy, and then we're a little unsettled as we get into the end of the week. Temperatures fairly pleasant. In fact, in the upper 60s to low 70s. And if you'd like to track this on your own, the Fox 19 Weather Now app is radar forecast current conditions and a video forecast all available in the palm of your hand. Download that today and stay connected. Jeff, thanks. Well, police certainly couldn't miss this carjacker, a suspect leading a massive chase in a bright green taxi. The video is crazy. The entire thing caught on camera. I'm Nathan Backrack from Simply Money, and coming up, Apple opens up for pre-orders on their new watches, but even Apple fans need to know a few things about that watch before they buy one. I've got the details just ahead. This is Fox 19 Now. 
an overturned tractor trailer is sending a person to the hospital in an air care helicopter today. This happened on Glendale Milford Road in Sims Township around 1.30 this afternoon. The victim there, 45-year-old Michael Floor, trapped inside the truck for half an hour before emergency crews could get him out to safety. The Hamilton County Sheriff's Office says he took a turn too fast and lost control. Floor, though, is expected to be okay. <laughs> A live look for you back out at Lawrenceburg High School tonight as we continue our tribute to Lauren Hill. It was here that she took the court as a tiger wearing number 22 before committing to play as a lion at Mount St. Joe. Hundreds of people turning out all day long to share their memories and prayers. Lauren was a hero, inspiring each and every one of us with her determination and grace, especially impacting the lives of kids around the world, becoming the face of pediatric cancer awareness and providing a bright spot in what is an extremely dark diagnosis. And she decided, you know what? God's only giving me a few months to live. I'm going to make that most of it. And she did. I mean, she made such an incredible impact on DIPG research. And also, she made such an effort to galvanize the entire nation. Get this. In the past year, Lauren has helped raise $2.4 million in the name of DIPG research. It equals the same amount the Cure Starts Now has raised since it began seven years ago. Basketball superstar LeBron James adding his voice to so many others honoring Lauren Hill today. He posted this on Twitter. Dear Lauren Hill, you are the true definition of strength, courage, power, leadership, etc., etc. Your time spent on earth will never be forgotten. I never got the chance to meet you in person, but no, you inspired me the whole time. For every life you touched, you made the biggest impact on them by just being you. You're in a far better place now. Please don't have too much fun out there without all your family and friends. Can you please tell my grandma I said hello? Don't be afraid, she knows you, because we spoke about you plenty of times. Until we officially meet again, take care and continue to be that leader we all love. Sincerely, LeBron James. I think she's in a better place now. You know, uh, the everyday struggles that she had to deal with, um, you know, throughout her treatment and throughout her care and everyone, um, you know, she's in a better place now. The man above doesn't make any mistakes. Um, and, you know, while she was here on Earth, uh, you know, in the presence, she, uh, she inspired a lot of people. And another big name in sports reacting tonight, Devin Stills' daughter Leah and Lauren Hill will be forever linked by their fights against cancer. Devin today saying, quote, when you die, it does not mean you lose to cancer. You beat cancer by how you live. And we invite you to share your thoughts and condolences to the family of Lauren Hill. How has she inspired you? Go to fox19now.com and tell us your story. Live look outside right now. Jeff, what are we looking at this weekend? Well, we've got clear skies overnight as high pressure continues to build in. Nice looking night, nice looking day tomorrow, nice looking day on Sunday. We do have some rain to talk about, but you know what? Let's concentrate on a nice looking weekend. We'll talk about that in your seven day forecast all ahead. Fox 19 Weather Now is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. Welcome back. We start uh, with uh, pictures out of Lawrence County, Ohio. That is out towards the Portsmouth area. This is a large rock that fell onto the roadway out there on US 52. That's the, that, that guy standing there, I did a little research on this. That guy standing there is six foot tall. And that rock weighs somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,500 tons. Now, that would have put a pretty serious end to your day had that rolled onto the road. But that's pretty amazing, that uh, falling from uh, just up the hill there. Pretty amazing uh, pictures coming out of Lawrence County, Ohio. Uh, for us, things are very quiet out there. We've got high pressure continuing to build in. Uh, we've got clear skies out there, light winds. May see a little bit of fog as you get up tomorrow morning, but that may be your biggest problem. That and remembering where you left your sunglasses today. 59 degrees on the Ray St. Clair roof cam. Here's the Doppler radar and satellite summary. Things are quiet. 
Doppler radar, we've got clean sweep out there, a much different sight than what we've seen the last couple of days. We get an opportunity to dry out. High pressure continuing to build in. Nice disturbance working through northern Ohio. That's going to drag a very weak cold front through here, but not going to do anything except give us a little bit of oh, upper level cloud cover, but that should be about it. Otherwise, skies mainly clear overnight, and as we go through your day tomorrow, plenty of sunshine. In fact, here's the uh, high res RPM model. We'll throw this into motion as we go over the course of the day. There's noon as we go through. 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, no problems. In fact, very little, if anything, in the way of sun, uh, cloud cover. There's 8 o'clock on Sunday night. Things are very quiet. Your extended forecast checks in like this. We're looking at uh, 62 for your Saturday, 70 for your Sunday. We bring those showers and thunderstorms back as we get into Monday, 71. And then we stay in the upper 60s as we go through the rest of the extended forecast. If you're headed to the Reds game tomorrow, that first pitch temperature somewhere in the neighborhood of about 59 by that uh, seventh inning stretch. I think we're looking at around 62 degrees. So we'll concentrate on just this weekend. We're going to watch the Ohio River. That should crest around 50 feet as we get into Monday afternoon. It does not look at this point like it's going to go to flood. Things are quiet and that rain that we've got coming up not going to add to any of our problems. And we're back after this. And talking about Lauren Hill and the weather, they were saying on the mount today that after all of this rain, the skies open up, a beautiful day, and maybe that has a little something to do with Lauren Hill. Kind of makes you believe a little bit, doesn't it? It does, it a does. special young lady. It, she's been a special day for us to remember her. Thank you, Lauren, for the inspiration. Thank you for watching.